With all the promotion you do, wouldn't it be great if other people started sharing it more and passing it around and talking about it so that you could work less? Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Bobby Borg, musician, author, and professor. And I'm going to sit down with Freddie Nasier, a professor at USC and also the owner of Atomic Tango, to talk about something called word of mouth marketing. We're going to discuss controversy, influencers, and mystery and intrigue. Here's our conversation recorded at USC's Annenberg DIY podcast studio. Check it out. And if you like it, please go ahead and hit subscribe and the notification bell so that we can keep on doing this. Peace. Peace. So, Freddie, thank you very much for coming out today. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to this discussion. Yeah. Um, before we get started, I'm going to uh, put things into perspective here for the audience. And uh, essentially what I want to do is I want to refer to a book called The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. It's a classic uh, book. It's been out for a while, but um, still very relevant. And the way that the author defines word of mouth marketing is as follows. So word of mouth marketing is the process of stimulating natural conversation or buzz about your products or services. So essentially in the crowded marketplace today, it's not enough just to push out messages and hope that they are successful. You have to get people to talk about, to discuss and enthusiastically recommend your offerings. And uh, some of the ways to do this obviously are through influencers, mm -hmm. through controversy and through mystery and intrigue. So that brings us to part one, identifying influencers. So, um, uh, Freddie, maybe a double barrel question here, uh -huh. but if first you can define what influencers are, mm -hmm. and then maybe you can describe how we can get them to talk about our products and services. Sure. So, first point I want to make is that the word influencers is one of the most overused, misused, and abused words today. It's used loosely to refer to social media stars. But the thing is, not every social media star is an influencer and not every influencer is a social media star. An influencer by definition is somebody who changes somebody's thinking or behavior. So if your social media star simply looks good and likes to pose with products, but they don't change people's minds or get people to do anything, they're not an influencer, they're a model. Right. <laughs> they may be a very good model and there's nothing wrong with models. Models have helped brands for ages, but they're not influencers. We really need to go out there and yes, look at social media, but there are a lot more options for promoting music. For example, when I was working in the music industry, uh, we would call them tastemakers. We didn't use the term influencers back then. Tastemakers, trendsetters. And in certain neighborhoods, some of the biggest tastemakers or influencers when it came to music were people who ran beauty parlors and barber shops. Mm -hmm. Because people would go in there and the music would be playing in the background and they'd be sitting there getting their hair done and they'd say, who's that? It right. sounds fantastic. Who's right. that? And the barbershop owner or the beautician would say, well, that's the new Heavy D album. Heavy D's got a new album out? I didn't know that. <laughs> that's influence. And this is somebody who's not a celebrity. They just run the local shop. Right, right. And the same could be true of, you know, the most popular Uber driver in the neighborhood. Get them an album, your latest album, they're playing it, passengers get in. I was like, this sounds amazing. What the album is this? So we need to get a little more creative when we identify who we call an influencer because a lot of people that we say are influencers really are not. Right. That's very interesting. I, I like the example that you also gave about the taxi driver. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Red Bull may be getting taxi drivers to drink Red Bull because therefore, you know, it makes sense. They're up, they're driving late, you know, they have lots of energy and Red Bull gives you wings, you know, that kind of uh, match up there. So that makes a lot of sense. And people don't really think about, as you pointed out, you know, that the local kid in, in the school that wears the latest tennis shoes and knows mm -hmm. about the latest parties could also be um, an influencer. But to, for the second part of that question, mm -hmm. how do we get them to start talking about us? I mean, do we just, you know, seed our products and services to them, you know, uh, give out free samples to them, uh, 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 you know, approach them and just simply mm -hmm. ask them? Like, what would the process be maybe? Certainly, I mean, that's all possible, but I always tell people, network before you need it. Mm -hmm. Before you go out there and asking favors of people, get to know them. You know, if you want to go to your local bartender and say, please play this music at the bar, it's royalty free, right. just play my album. Right. What you don't want them to say is, who the hell are you? Right. You want them to be able to say, oh, Bobby, yeah. Right. 
you know, you've been telling me about this album you've been working on. Yeah, I'll give it a spin. Mm -hmm. So get to know people before you start asking favors. And that's why networking is so important. Networking isn't going to a party and trying to make sales there. Right. It's getting to know people and what they care about. Networking is listening. It's giving. So that way, when you are ready, you have this relationship with the local music journalist, with the local club promoter, with the local bartender. But you can't be a stranger asking for favors. Right. Then when you're ready, absolutely have your samples. Make people feel important too. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to be first. Everyone wants to be the one who's the discovery. Right. The, the one who has the discovery, the discoverer. Everyone wants to be that person who says, oh, I was the first one who played that album. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, hey guys, listen up. I've got this new album. It's never been played before. It's going to premiere right here. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to be the first. So if there's somebody who's really important in your influencer chain, mm -hmm. give them exclusives. Love it. Right? Bobby, I want yeah. you to be the first to hear my new album. Really? No one else has reviewed the album yet? Right. No, you'll be the first. Because nobody wants to be the 31st person to hear the album. Exactly. Man, this is like gold for information, you guys. Um, I mean, the things that you're mentioning are so important, yet people don't think about some of these things. They're always worried about, you know, uh, you know, just how can I sell? How can I sell? You know, right. awesome stuff. Let's move on to part two. Um, and we're talking about word of mouth marketing, of course, and using now controversy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people like Kanye West, I mean, some people feel, wow, he's a genius. You know, he does things and gets people to talk about him and he and he stays in the press because you know he does controversial things like call himself and refer to himself as god and you know grab the mic out of uh, taylor swift's hands and you know and, and people say he's a genius you know and and but we have to be careful because um oftentimes you know um you know all press is not good press you know sometimes bad press could be bad press so mm -hmm. when is using controversy um useful and maybe when is it not useful well I think controversy can be very effective, but it has to be the right kind of controversy. Mm -hmm. Now, Kanye can get away with what he's doing because he's established, he's incredibly wealthy, and he has an army of lawyers who can get him out of trouble at any time. <laughs> right. Most musicians starting out don't have any of the above. Mm -hmm. So if you go out there and you try to cause trouble, there were some musicians a few years back here in L.A. that blocked traffic and tried to do a concert off the back of a truck. Well, yes, that got them a lot of press coverage. It also got them an appearance before a judge. Right. So that really didn't enhance their career that much. Right. The better kind of controversy and music and controversy go together because young people look to musicians for expression. And a lot of that, young people have a lot of pent up emotions. Musicians express those emotions for them. Right. So a little rebellion, you know, Miley Cyrus being a little crazy actually worked. It resonated with her audience, young women who wanted to be as crazy as she was but couldn't because right. of their situation. But the thing is, her controversy related back to her music. Right. And that's the kind of controversy I endorse. When you're out there just breaking the law, yes, I'll get your attention, but what does that have to do with your music? Let the music do the talking for you. Let your stage performance do the talking for you. Is your stage performance a little out there, unusual, different? Right. That's the kind of controversy that you want. That's word of mouth. You want people saying, have you heard the song? Have you checked out this album? Right. Wow, you gotta listen to Pink Floyd's The Wall. You've never listened to The Wall? Right. Did you hear what they sang about this? Right. As opposed to, did you hear what so-and-so did? Oh, yeah. God, what an idiot. He's in yeah. jail. Yeah, right. That's not the controversy you want. So let your music do the talking. Push those issues. There's a lot to talk about in today's society. Mm -hmm. It's actually fairly easy to stir up controversy. All you need to do is express a strong, sincere opinion that right. you hold. I think the key word there is is sincere. It can't yes. be fake. No. Let's move on to part three, and mm -hmm. that is mystery and intrigue. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I myself have witnessed this many, many times. I mean, in Los Angeles, when I first came out here, I used to see posters all over the place um, without any like, writing at all. It was just the face that appeared to be Andre the Giant, and you're like, 
What is the significance of that? So I started research, I started asking questions, I started discussing, and mm -hmm. 25 years later, I'm still discussing it with you, right? Sure. So I thought it was brilliant, and as it turns out, it was eventually leaked, and you know, as, as the campaign developed, that it was Shepard Ferry and his clothing company, Obey. You know, so we see uh, a lot of this type of marketing done mm -hmm. in the movie industry and in the music industry, you know, like right. coming soon, you know. So do you agree with the concept of, of mystery and intrigue uh, absolutely. Um, marketing and can you? Yeah, I yeah, absolutely bit? endorse it. Look, um, word of mouth essentially means gossip. Mm -hmm. And what we like to gossip about is stuff that intrigues us, that teases. We all love a good tease. And if something is blatant, everyone already knows about it, there's nothing to gossip about. There's no secrets to share. Right. You're not seen as an insider by telling everyone, hey, did you know that Rihanna has a new album out? Well, yeah, where have you been hiding out? Right. That's nothing to talk about. So we need that intrigue just to give us something to talk about. More importantly, and from a marketing perspective, a good teaser campaign forces an artist or brand to think long term. Because mm -hmm. we need that long, slow build. Except for the hyper celebrities, most of us do not get sales just by announcing, hey everyone, our new album is out. Right. And everyone rushes off and starts to download it or grabs the vinyl or whatever it is. It takes time to build that awareness, to build that interest, the desire to get people to act. It takes time. So teaser campaign forces you to be disciplined. Right. right. And reveal a little bit at a time. And that way when it's time to release, everyone rushes out and gets it then. Sure. And that's important because we have to game the charts. The charts uh, celebrate what's successful immediately in the short term. The charts, if you sell a little bit of your album over the years, you're never going to chart and that's not going to promote sales. Mm -hmm. So the teaser campaign actually helps you game the charts. Speaking of gaming, audiences like a game too. Mm -hmm. It's a little treasure hunt. Yeah. So you reveal a little piece of your album here and there. I'm so glad to see vinyl coming back because it means the return of album art. Right, right. And if you have great art, use it. Tease a little bit like Shepard Fairey did. Yeah. Tease a little bit of your art to have people say, what is that amazing image? What is that compelling image? And then, but it's like a clue. They, they, they get that little bit. Now here's the key. When you reveal your art, you need to tell people where to go next. Right. Right? It may be an Instagram account, it may be a YouTube channel, it may be a website. I think every artist should have a website. So that way, when they've discovered the first clue, they can move on, where do I go now, to check out the second clue. Right. It also enables you to measure whether your first clue was successful because now you can track the progress. Mm -hmm. And now they come to the second destination and another clue. It's a game. Right. It's a game and audiences want to be part of your game with you. Absolutely. And the, the, some people want to be the smart ones. Oh, I know what this is. This is the new album from Kanye. Right. And they want to be the one that reveals it. Right. So I hugely endorse teaser campaigns. I think it generates a long-term discussion about your album as opposed to hurry everyone, buy now, mm -hmm. which is not a discussion. That's an in-your-face sales right. pitch. Right. And it's entertaining and engaging. It reflects your brand. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. So thank you very much. So hey, you guys, I hope you like that material on word of mouth marketing and influencers, controversy, and mystery and intrigue. Similar material is found in my books, Business Basics for Musicians and Music Marketing for the DIY Musician found on Amazon.com. And if you like the material that we do here, please be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that we can continue to do what we do. Also, here's a couple more videos that I highly recommend, which can help you turn your art into a more successful business. So hey you guys, thanks for watching. Again, I'm Bobby Borg, Bobby Borg Consulting. Peace.